Hey YouTubers, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. How are you? Greetings in Benjamin Dazalum. <laughs> yeah, what the hell was she saying? Uh, I want to thank everybody, like a dozen of you. I was very touched that so many people, it means that people actually listened to me talk in that last video when I could not pronounce the name of this yellow. It is Benzimidazolone, which to me sounds like some sort of greeting from a foreign country that you would say to somebody with the tip of your hat, like Benzimidazolone to you. <laughs> so silly. Uh, it's a beautiful day here. I uh, did some apple picking over the weekend. My daughter's at the skating rink, got the house to myself. So um, I think this is the first time ever where I'm going to do back-to-back -back videos using the same colors. Like, I never do that. But um, I'm going to show you today how I mix things as well, since so many have asked. It's not very scientific, but um, at least you'll get to see how. And um, before I get started, there's going to be another little short clip that will pop up after my greeting here to show you the dried results uh, from that last video because I was so excited I filmed it, um, like, two days after they were dry. So you'll get to see that and then we'll get started. See you in a second. Okay guys, before we get started with uh, today's adventures, just wanted to give you um, a little clip here of the dry results from the last video. This was the first one, the square. It's beautiful and I am not resonating this one. This one's probably only going to get a very light spray varnish. And the reason why is I want to keep um, that illusion of texture. And when you use, if you use a couple coats of varnish or definitely resin, um, you lose that a little bit, the depth, I feel. So I, I'm not going to be selling this one anytime soon. I will eventually. But um, I'm going to keep it for a few months and enjoy it. I love it. It's so, so pretty. So there's the first one. Um, I'm going to skip to the second one. Is not skip. Go to the second one to look at how textured this looks. And it's smooth. And it's definitely because of the red violet in those uh, cells. But it is smooth. Um white blingy too from all the bronze so if you're a bronze lover um with the turquoise it just looks amazing sorry for the glare but there's that guy and then the bad news is unfortunately the third one the little eight inch round remember i had too much paint on it and i spun some of it out it um it puddled it puddled as it was drying um, and ruined um, all the lacing and cells in a bunch of areas and I had to scrape it. So I tried to redo it. And at the time, um, the, the primary color with the dark red cells is, was the Cronacridone Violet, which I was out of. So now I have a brand new bottle and we'll be using this today. So I redid it using Cronacridone Magenta, um, but it gave it a completely different look. I mean, it's super pretty. Don't get me wrong, you still get that illusion again um, with the pink and the bronze look amazing together, but it's not that it's not that second one, and I was sad. Uh, I bet you you guys would be sad too. Hopefully, um, this one though really really let me get in close. Yeah, like if I didn't know that other one had existed, I would be tickled pink with this one but what are you going to do anyway that's enough of show and tell let's get started okay all set up um i just wanted to show you because i haven't cleaned out my container in a while that um when i was talking about the um the hair bonnets the shower caps that i demoed that i use um, this is how they peel off you just give them a scratch and then grab it. I find it quite satisfying. I'm not going to do this all in front of you, but I just wanted to show that they are peelable and pretty easy to clean. So here's that because I'm going to put um, 
I, I pre-mixed a couple colors, so I'm not gonna do them all in front of you. So there's my um, Benzamidazolone Yellow from the last time. I got my Permanent Violet Deep, this is golden. And then I need to make up some Cronacridone Violet. So these are um, three ounce little cups. Let me move these out of the way. And so I have about two ounces of my pouring medium. I did a recipe, again, as usual, recipe, pouring medium ratios, colors, brands, will all come up at the end of the video. Everyone's like, you didn't post it. And I always wanna say, you didn't watch, because it's at the end of the video. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you how I mixed three different things. One, I'm gonna use fluid acrylics, and like, um, oh, I did the pilot ballet. I need the cronacridone ballet. Just give it a little shake. And like I said, not very scientific because all I'm going to do is add a bunch. Whoops, that was probably too much. I just pour a little in and then give it a mix with my spoon until I get the desired shade. It really is that easy. And since it's already liquid, it mixes up pretty quick. Just give that a good mix and that's it. So there's no like real ratio because you're just adding drops until you get the shade you want. And don't mess with the consistency afterwards too. Whatever the pouring medium consistency is with my two to one ratio um, that I'll talk about in a minute, I leave it be. The only time I mess with it is for two paints um, and which I'll show you in a minute. So that's the fluid acrylic. How I do it. And then for pigments, like today we're going to use the um, Color Art Primary Elements. This is Ginger Peach. I put a dollop because the color dry doesn't always match the color wet. So it's always a good idea the first time you use it to put a little drop on your cap so you know the true shade of what it looks like. And then my Ginger Peach. Now my little spoons that I use, if you order color art and there's a coupon or discount code in the description section, they come with little white spoons. I like my silver ones, I talked about that before. These are eighth of a teaspoon. Again, I'm just gonna go in and get a scoop. Kind of like that. And dunk it in there, pretty much. And we'll give this a good mix. Now this you do need to make sure it's mixed really well. You don't want errant clumps. They will show up in your artwork um, as little dots, little darker colored dots in your art if it's not mixed up well. And I'll see if I can find one. See the striations? Like you don't want that. You wanna make sure this is really, really well stirred and dispersed into your pouring medium or your polypore. Um, which is their pre-mixed pouring medium. Um, you wanna make sure it's well stirred. So give that a stir for a second. Again, pretty, pretty easy. That's the uh, shade. It matches the shade on my lid. Good to go. So there was the fluid acrylics. There was a pigment. And then finally, I'm out of bronze in a liquid form. So I'm gonna use Amsterdam bronze um, today. So there's my cup. And basically what I do for here is I, I squirt out about an inch, you know, just like I just watch it, but I'm not going to do that. I'll be all, um, yeah, I will do that. Um, you can do it on a spoon if you want, however you like to measure. So this to me would probably be two spoons full. So there's one, we'll do one and see what that looks like, just so you can see. And this is going to be thicker because it's two paint. And you'll be able to see like, oh, one tube wasn't enough because look how light that is. It's light and white and there's not enough paint to mix with the pouring medium. So I'm like, I definitely need a second spoonful. So I'm just gonna squirt some on there. Like that, like a heaping spoonful. Stick that in there and give it a mix till it comes off the spoon. And you'll see it get darker.
Now, obviously, this is much, much thicker. I might add a little more, too. I'm just going to um, just get another tiny little dollop in here. Like that. Give that a mix. You'll notice this is going to be a lot thicker than the other two because it's two paint. See that, how glumpy it is? Gloopy, is that a word? Like that, compared to the fluid acrylics, which is creamier. Same with the pigments, because we haven't done anything. There's pretty much the same consistency. The couple drops you add from the fluid acrylics isn't enough to really change the uh, consistency. But this is thicker, so you can do two things. You can either just add water to this you know, several drops of water to make it thinner, or you can use your gloss varnish that's a part of your pouring medium recipe. Now today I did change up, I ran out of the Minwax Polyacrylic, so I have switched to the Color Art. Hold on, I'm gonna take, oh, I'll leave the lid on to show you. I'm using this as part of my pouring medium. This is their, this is Crystal Lac Company, it's the same company that made, makes the bright tone varnish that I demoed. This is their gloss top coat. It's the water-based um, poly, same thing. So it's the water, water-based polyacrylic, pretty much the same as um, the Minwax polyacrylic. I got the gloss version. So I'm gonna pop the lid off a second. And I know I'm off camera. But basically, I'm just gonna take this and use like a teaspoon and add like a teaspoon of my gloss to it and then give that a mix and see where we are. I just got it all over my hand. One sec. Wipe off my fingers and put the cap back on and give this a mix. I tried to leave a little bit of extra room because I knew it was going to be um, a two paint and I knew I was gonna be adding to it so I didn't make it quite as full as the other colors just so I would have room to mix. But just that one teaspoon pretty much made it nice and creamy, the same as the other colors. So we're good to go. We got our bronze, got our orange. Let me pop the lid back on this. So for that pouring medium recipe, I'm on my last gallon of the HGTV Sherwin Williams Ultra Deep Base Untinted House Paint. And I did the same recipe with this varnish as I did with my wind wax. So it's two to one ratio. So I usually make up in my quart, I will fill up 12 ounces of um, the untinted house paint and then, you know, two to one. So it's one to so 12 ounces, be half of that another six ounces, so 18 ounces um, total. So six ounces of the uh, polyacrylic. And that's it. Colors mixed, good to go. Remove these off to the side. Um, I think the all the colors are the same as the last video, with the exception of my pouring medium color. In that last video, I used Amsterdam's turquoise green, and because I, I really liked how that green, the turquoise went to a true green when it hit the um, yellow or the bronze, I'm using turquoise blue. So you can see the difference. This is empty now um, in the color. So I'm going with this today. Last video had the green. I have two to do. Um, and because I'm using the same colors today, what I think I'm going to do is um, viewer, viewer's choice for the last one. So I have this 8-inch one. I have a 12-inch one that we're going to do today. And then for a future video, viewer's choice, that means I'm going to post this on YouTube and on my Facebook page for this 20-inch round. Send me your color wishes, five colors, and I'm gonna pick one and we'll do it. Or maybe I'll do a, I'll take, maybe what I'll do is uh, take a bunch of suggestions 
and then take the top three and put them up for a vote. And viewer's choice, um, I will use the colors you guys suggest for this 20 inch round. I just think that would be fun. All right, you know, try to be interactive. So this will start off with my little eight inch round. Um, and I'm gonna turn the camera off for one second. I'm trying a new thing where I'm using two cameras in case I need to puff on it. You guys will be able to see me do that. Be back in one <laughs> second. Okay guys, I'm back. I already had a mishap. I just cut it out. I um, I spilled some paint. That's all you need to know. Gonna, let's start with this first guy here. See how we do. our base coat down and let's see what happens the orange Let's give that another mix. The bronze seems a little thick. We'll see how that works out. And then the violet. And the cell activator. I changed my cell activator. I added a little touch more of um, Australian flow chal, so it is closer to a four to one uh, ratio. And I'm sliding off. Make sure my little, I have like these little ridges at the bottom of my container, so I have to make sure my uh, Spinner is on the ridges or it won't be level. That look just not stopped moving. All right, here we go. Did a little too hard right there. I got a white dot from the paint. Give that a second. I'm gonna put my hair in um, hair band and give this a puff in the middle. I kind of did a sideways uh, blow dryer job there. Didn't do my best, but. I'm going to take off my glasses, put my hair up, and let's give this a puff. I might leave a lot of that blank and have some negative space in the middle. Got some cells coming up to some little baby ones. We're just gonna give that a second. Got some cells coming up to some little baby ones. We're just gonna give that a second. I'm gonna clear this off to make it easier for you guys to see. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that blue there. Yep. Maybe open up the cells a bit. I don't like this one right here. I'm gonna stick my finger in it. That's like a squiggly line that'll only grow. So I wanna make it disappear. A 
much. All right, let's spin this out. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. That's pretty. It looks like, I love, I love the blue lake. I like that a lot. I got a couple little white cells. When this dries, I will touch those colors up and make them orange or <clears throat> I have a paintbrush that's like <laughs> got like three hairs on it that I will put dots on those three. But that's a keeper otherwise. Um, I'm a little worried that I have too much paint since I poured right over that other one. So I'm going to give it um, just another little spin. I don't want um, what happened in that last video, that last piece where it puddled. Like it looked great just like this. And then over the next hour, the paint went into the middle and ruined all the lacing. I don't want that to happen. So we're going to give that just a little bit of a spin. Just like that. That's ta-da! Yeah, that's really, really super pretty. Let me do this so you can see it. Someone was asking if I could make skins um, with the stuff on my tarp. And the answer is yes. And now I just did a total goober move with my spatula and ruined the sides of this. <laughs> God, this is goober day, I swear. Just another little spin to get the paint to run down on the sides and fix it though. It should be easy enough, hopefully. Yeah, that one's great. Let me um, put him to the side and we'll do the 12 inch one. Be right back. All right, take two. There's a ginger peach. I don't know what I have filmed and what I don't. If I'm quiet, it's because I'm really grumpy because this is take three and I had a beautiful painting, and then went to point out something to you guys and ran white, white paint through it. And so I just scraped it. And so I'm grumpy because that was, it was a pretty painting. All right, last time, she tells herself optimistically. Large hair dryer this time, cool air, medium can. looks very similar to the last one I just did and what I was saying in the last iteration of this was that I was going to keep some of um, the middle let me turn off uh, area hold on blank a little bit of negative space I love all the colors I got. So I'm just gonna give a little puff, nothing crazy. Leave most of that where it is, maybe just right there in that one spot. I'll take off my glasses a second. That's it, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave the rest of that blank. Let that collect a minute. 
I think this is going to open up color wise when we give it a spin. Just give that another 10 seconds to pull puddle. It pulls in underneath. And then we'll give it a spin. It's almost there. I still see it moving. And there we go. All right, just do a little spin to start. Okay, not that little. Yeah, I see it getting brighter right away as the colors open up. Might be serendipity because this one's prettier than the last one, thankfully. I'm going to pick it up and tilt it a little bit because there's a bunch of just blank stuff right here that um, I'm not real fond of. So I'm going to shift the weight of the paint back a little bit. Just a little bit because there's still plenty there in the middle. Open that up. Something like that. stop and stare. The uh, turquoise blue did not change color um, the way that I thought it would. It pretty much stayed. Oh, it did a little bit in some places. It went green where it hit the yellow, but um, mostly it held its own. I kind of would like to bring this all the way over. Let me go. Some of it's getting there. Yeah, is that opening up more? I think one more and I'll be good to go. That was one B. Did that do it though? Nope. I don't want to lose the shape of myself, so I don't want to wing it either. I just wanted like this part to slide off, and it did. So the only other thing I'm going to do is for me picking up and tilting it. I don't like my cells to look like they're going in any one direction. Um, I want them to be like, I want them to be like bad drivers who don't use their turn signals to indicate where they're going, which drives me nuts. In my neighborhood, like people coming down the main road and I'm trying to get out and they're gonna turn right into my neighborhood and never use your turn signal. So you sit there for no reason and can't go. It drives me crazy. That's kind of a weird analogy, right? But I'm just gonna straighten out those cells in the middle a little bit. Check to see how much paint I have on my canvas. That is one bright and happy painting, y'all. Ta-da! Uh, I am not going to point out anything because that's how I ruined the last one. Let me um, put him down next to his brother and I'll get you guys in for a close-up. Be right back. Okay, back for the close-up view. Here's the first guy. Seems like I did it eons ago. <laughs> uh, like I said, that white right there. I will definitely touch that up. Um, but otherwise, love, love the blue. It's not showing as vivid on camera as it is in real life. None of this is really, because it's quite striking. But there's that first little mushroom top and then the big one here. The big one here, um, the blue lacing um, is a little more visible. And I totally love how it's two-toned. Um, down here with the yellow and then the reds and the oranges up there. The middle got a little more separation from uh, not puffing everywhere in the middle. So there they be. I'm officially uh, ready for new colors after two videos in a row. Let me flip around and say goodbye. That was a rough one, y'all. <laughs> it was. Um, 
What was I going to say? I hope you like and uh, please share, like, and subscribe. Very, very close to 35K. Hope you guys put me over the hump. Um, for next time, next video will either be a waterfall pour. I figured I'm kind of due for one given, you know, I call myself waterfall acrylics. So do a waterfall pour and I still need to get back to my negative space series. But just real quick, I'm going to put it up on um, YouTube in the community section and on my Facebook page. Hold on, let me grab this. I can do it. Oh, you got to see my husband for a split second. This guy here, this 20 inch convexo round. Um, viewer's choice on the colors. Let me know what you'd like. Um, I'll take a whole bunch of suggestions and then I'll put up a little poll and uh, whatever's most popular will win and uh, we'll do a viewer's choice video on it. Just, you know, something fun to do. Anyway, you guys take care, be safe, be healthy and um, treat people with kindness and peace out. Hey guys, it's Karen. I'm back with the dried results. Uh, apologies for taking so long to get this video up. Been a little bit under the weather, but just a uh, bad case of hay fever and allergies from fall, fall stuff, you know, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, here's the first little eight inch round on the Convexo canvas. I went ahead and touched up that middle section. Um, once it dried, it's glorious. It's uh, hopefully the sheen is showing up because uh, I can't tell right now. Um, completely, completely different look uh, from the previous video with the same color combo. Um, I think um, a different brand of the um, the Crinacridone Crimson might have been in play. This was golden in the first video. It was Utrecht, so uh, maybe that has something to do with it. And obviously this is turquoise blue instead of turquoise green from Amsterdam. But there's the first guy, it's just gonna hang out. I am going to resin these. So they're just gonna sit around for a couple weeks and then they'll be up on my website for sale. Uh, the second one, the 12 inch one. Also, I don't quite trust this middle for me to touch it. I can touch all around, but you know, better safe than sorry. Uh, it also dried really great though. Very, very vivid, um, very, very striking piece. I think I'm trying to move it around so you can see uh, the sheen. It dried, they both dried quite glossy. This is my favorite part because it has the uh, bronze around the red cells right there. Um, yeah, dried very glossy and just hang it out. If you're interested in either piece, shoot me an email at waterfallacrylics at gmail.com and you could snag it and probably get a little bit better of a price than you would on my website. I'm just saying. So that's it for me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care y'all. Bye-bye.